Hi guys, welcome back, and today we're going to be learning some bluesy chords. Now, specifically, and if we're going to get theoretical, these are called dominant seventh chords. Okay, that's your typical, if you're thinking of a 12 bar blues or anything relating to blues at all, you're probably hearing dominant seventh chords. Okay, now in theory terms, I don't want to get too deep into it because we do that over in the theory section. Please play that a visit and you'll see uh, how to build these chords and why they sound like they do and everything else. But for now, all we need to know is that a dominant seventh chord is kind of like a major chord, but it's also got an element of minor in it. And that makes it sound a little bit unsure of itself. And this is what the blues is all about. The blues is all about tension and release. And this is why the seventh chords, the dominant seventh chords, play such a massive part of it. Because they're a little bit of a mix between the major happiness and the minor sad, all pushed together. So, you know, it's a really basic explanation, but for my ears, that's what it's all about. So, we're going to be learning three chord shapes. We're going to be learning an E7, an A7, dominant 7, and a B7. Okay, now we're going to be gradually learning more and more chord shapes, but for now these are the ones we're going to start with. And I'm going to give you a few options of how to play them as well. So we're going to start with the E7, okay? The best way to work this one out is just playing E major. So hopefully you all remember the E major chord. Really basic, E major open shape like that, okay? And all we've got to do is actually take away the third finger. And that note that we've kind of taken away, this open D string, is that minor element of it. It's called the flat seven, okay? And that will create this kind of sound. So it's, you can hear it's still quite major, but it's not as, not as happy. There's a little bit more to this, a little bit more unresolvedness to that. So there's your E7, okay? So just, to, just in case you can't see it properly, I've got my second finger on the second fret of the A string and my first finger on the first fret of the G string, everything else is open. Now, the other way to play this, if you want to really highlight that tension, that um, dominant seventh element to it, is you put your little finger on the third fret of the B string. You can hear it's still an E7 chord, it's got that same note, it's a D note, okay, but it's got it higher up the chord now, which means that you hear it a little bit stronger. Okay, so you can either just do the normal one like that, or you can add that one in there as well. Okay, now it depends how fiddly or not you're comfortable with doing it, but that is quite fiddly, adding a little finger, but I think it's well worth it. I prefer the sound of that chord. Okay, so that's your E7 in one of those two ways. Now the A7 looks like this. Okay, so again, if you do your normal A major chord, and basically just remove the middle finger, that's an A7, okay? However, I'm going to refret it so that I use these two fingers. So I've got my second finger on the second fret of the D string, I've got the open G string, and I've got my third finger on the second fret of the B string, and then open E string. Plus I've got the open A string back here, not the low E string. And there's an A7 for you, okay? So that one, again, should be relatively easy. It's just about making sure the G is there, okay? That open G string. If it's muted, then this won't sound like a seventh chord at all. Which is why I'm going to give you a second option for this one as well. Because you can also play this one like this. Where again, we put that note that really clarifies the chord as a dominant right on the top of it. And here, it's almost easier, to be honest. You're just flattening your first finger against the second fret of the D, G, B, and E string. And then you're putting the third finger in front of that on the third fret of the E string. And that's another way to play the A7. So you can either play this way, which you'll see very commonly played, or this way. Both good, and we'll be practicing with both, okay? Now, the final chord is a B7, and this is a fiddly little one. Okay, totally new, unlike any other chord we've done so far, so we'll start from scratch with this one. So what we do is we put our second finger on the second fret of the A string. We're going to put the first finger here on the first fret of the D string. Then third finger on the second fret of the G string. Then we're going to have an open B string and a little finger on the second fret of the high E string, giving us all together 
no E string at all, okay? Now this one's quite fiddly, you're going you're gonna to probably have a little bit of a trouble just getting all the fingers in the right place and all nice and clear. Very usually you'll find that people can't quite get this, this second, this first finger ringing out properly, so the D string, and it's normally because this finger here is just slightly blocking it. So if you hear this, you've just got to make sure that thumb goes a bit more to the back of the neck and you get more of a bridge around everything like we did when we first learnt the open chords. And there we have our B7. So, all together you've got an E7, either like that, or like that. You've got an A7, either like this, or like this, and you've got a B7. Okay? So, there you have it. Your task from this lesson is pretty obvious, I would think, is just to learn all of those chord shapes. Learn them all. So it, it, I know it's three chord shapes, but we've actually learned five different shapes to do them, right? So learn all of those because we're going to be using all of them to practice with, okay? So have a bit of fun with that, and next time we're going to start looking at a proper 12-bar blues.